اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم As part of data analysis and results, since we've been focusing on measurement model assessment, we have discussed factor loading, we have discussed reliability, that is alpha composite reliability, and we have discussed part of validity, and in this last session we discussed convergent validity. Now the next step in measurement model assessment is your discriminant validity. And finally, after this, we report the measurement model. In this video, I'm going to talk about discriminant validity. However, I'm going to use the same simple model just for the sake of understanding the concepts. Now, once all these concepts have been discussed, we are going to do a complete measurement model for all the lower order constructs. That is vision development rewards, these constructs here, dimensions of internal service quality and these constructs here. So we will validate our lower order constructs and do a measurement model with all these lower order constructs. But for now, we are going to focus on understanding the basic concepts that obviously make up the measurement model. In this session, the focus is on discriminant validity. Discriminant validity in Smart PLS 4. Discriminant validity is utilized to establish distinctiveness of the different constructs in this study is the extent to which a construct is empirically distinct from the other constructs in the study. It is the empirical establishment of distinctiveness or how different is one construct from the other. Because in social sciences research, different concepts may overlap. So it is very important that you establish discriminant validity. Now, in order to establish discriminant validity, we've got different methods. The first one and probably the most used and the older method is Fornell Locker criterion. Now, Fornell and Locker criterion that was proposed by Fornell and Locker in 1981. It is a traditional metric and suggested that each constructs square root of AVE that we already calculated earlier for convergent validity and is referred to as within construct variance. Now, this should be compared to inter-construct correlation that is the measure of shared variance and your within variance or variance within the construct shall be higher than the shared variance. If that is the case then Fornell and Locker criterion shows that discriminant validity is established. Now how do we do this? Let's have a look. Now again the same example let's go to reports the same old report discriminant validity and Fornell and Locker criterion. Now this one here, this value 0.786 is the square root of AVE for CC. How do I know this? Let's go to construct validity 0.618 and if we take its square root that will come down to 0.786. Now this is within construct variance that is variance within collaborative culture. Now this should be higher than its correlation with all the other constructs in this study that is shared variance. In this case, we only have one other construct that is OP. Is this greater? Yes, this is greater. So no issues of discriminant validity here. The next one 0.861. This is the square root of AVE for OP. Now is the correlation of OP less than the square root of AVE? Or in other words, is the shared variance less than variance within? Yes, it is. If you look here, this value is greater than this value here, which is the correlation between CC and OP. Otherwise, you can just copy this value here, paste it here in Excel sheet and make the comparisons. The reason there is no value here because the value is repeating. The correlation between CC and OP is the same as correlation between OP and CC. Now, let's say if I add one more construct just for the sake of understanding. Let's say I'm going to add OL. Let's drag it and drop it here. Yes, that's fine. Let's connect it here. Let's calculate or run PLS algorithm again and reports discriminant validity for the locker criteria. Now look at this. This value here is higher than these two values. 
this value here is higher than this value but this is only one comparison what about ol and cc there is no comparison between ol and cc you can just simply copy the value between cc and ol here over here because the correlation between cc and ol is the same as the correlation between ol and cc now this value here this is the square root of ave shall be higher than the correlation of this construct with the other constructs now let's do it in excel let's copy this copy and let me open excel let's paste it here let's increase the size now this is square root of ave bold and italic is this value that is variance within collaborative culture greater than its shared variance with the other constructs yes it is now is this value here ol that is variance within greater than its correlation with the other constructs now we only have one correlation here where is the other correlation the other correlation is here ol to cc ol to cc or we can copy it here so now this value is greater than these two values so your discriminant validity according to Fauner and Larker criterion is established now what is this where should I compare this there's no, there are no values underneath so you can compare it to the values on the left or either you can copy them here let's say op to cc is the same as cc to op and op ol is the same as ol op which is 0.631 so let's copy it here and now look at this this value is greater than these two values this value is greater than these two values and this value is greater than these two values hence according to Fauner and Larker criterion your discriminant validity is established moving on to the other methods heterotrait monotrait ratio heterotrait monotrait ratio or HTMT is a measure of discriminant validity it is a modern measure the HTMT is the mean of all correlations of indicators across constructs measuring different constructs. That is the heterotrait hetero method correlation relative to the geometric mean of the average correlations of indicators measuring the same construct. So heterotrait means the correlation between different constructs and monotrait means the correlation within the single construct. And then there are calculated using a formula to give us HTMT ratio. Now I will share a video on manual calculation of HTMT. But since we do not need to do the manual calculation, Smart PLS does provide us with HTMT ratio. We just need to interpret it. How to do it? Have a look. Now here is your HTMT ratio. And if you look here, all these values are green. The values are less than 0.85, so they are green. That is a more conservative measure. That is 0.85. That is a bit strict. You can have 0 0.90 as well, and that is recommended as well. So, in this case, they are well below 0.85. This means there are no issues of discriminant validity according to heterotrate monotrate ratio. And you can say there is distinctiveness in the constructs. How to report all these results? That will follow in coming videos. Now moving on, let's go to the final assessment or the other method of establishing discriminant validity. That is cross loadings. An item in a construct shall load substantially well onto its own parent construct instead of the other constructs in the study. And if it is loading on the other constructs, then obviously it is not representing its underlying construct and then there will be discriminant validity issues. Now, how do we look for this? Let's go back to Smart PLS and have a look here. Now, if you simply copy it, let's copy it, right click, copy and put it in Excel. Here it is. Let's increase the size a bit now if you look here this is cc1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is cc so these loadings here are for cc1 if that particular item is with its own parent construct now in this case these items when they are with its own parent construct they should load substantially well 
in comparison to when they are with the other constructs in the study? Is the item when it is with its own parent construct loading substantially well in comparison to the other constructs? Yes. Is this the case for the rest of them? Yes, it is. And no value here is greater than 0 0.70. No. So there is no issue of discriminant validity here. Now let's look at OL1. So OL1 here, OL column here, OL1 when loading onto its own parent construct has a higher loading in comparison to other constructs. Same is the case for the other items in here. So no issue of discriminant validity. And finally, OP loading well onto its own parent construct instead of OL and CC. Yes, it is. So there are no issues of discriminant validity. Now this is how you can establish discriminant validity using Smart PLS 4. In the next session, I'm going to discuss how to solve the issues with regards to discriminant validity. Thank you very much.